In 1908, Grinnell College acquired the first pieces of its art collection. Since then, the collection has expanded to more than 5,000 works of art. It includes pieces by Goya, William Hogarth, Picasso, Elishitsky, and Sarah Charlesworth, to name a few. In 1999, 90 years after the collection was started, Faulkner Gallery was opened on Grinnell's campus in the newly built Buxbaum Center for the Arts. Buxbaum and Faulkner were both designed by Cesar Pelli, an Argentinian-born, American-based architect known for buildings such as the Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia or the World Finance Center in New York City. Faulkner Gallery has no permanent exhibition space. With its movable wall panels, the gallery's 7,400 square feet can be divided to accommodate for display of diverse art media and various modes of exhibition. We're very lucky to have so much space. It's unusual for a college this size to have a museum space this size. Um, I don't know any of our peers in the Midwest that has this much. I mean, other schools have museums, but um, for changing exhibition spaces, this is an unusually large um, exhibition space. So we're able to have more than one show at a time which we usually do. The principle guiding the Grinnell art collection has been twofold. As noted in the Book of Accessions from 1983, it is supposed to be a teaching collection in the broadest sense of the term. The other goal, as articulated on the collection's webpage, is to acquire art with, quote, social and political commentary by artists who have taken up pen and stylus as weapons against oppression, exploitation, and human folly. Faulkner Gallery, in the first 20 years of its existence, has advanced and expanded the scope of both of these goals. For many years before Faulkner opened, the campus wanted a space to display art. And 10 years before Faulkner opened, the print and drawing study room was available. But the print and drawing study room is a very small space and it was just very limited in what could be exhibited here. Also, the purpose of a print and drawing study room was so that students could look at an art collection directly without any glazing or mounting surfaces between the viewer. So the print room worked very well for what it was designed to be, but there was no place on campus where you could mount a, a larger exhibition. There was no place on campus that would meet the security and environmental conditions that a large exhibition required. One thing that happened when Faulkner Gallery was created and started showing exhibitions, there was more confidence in the gallery to be able to buy, exhibit, and take care of works of art. So there was more money made available through trust funds and endowed funds for the gallery staff to make purchases of works of art. So as larger, more significant works came into the collection, more of that was shown in the gallery. The increase in both spatial and financial resources allowed the college to acquire much more sculpture, ceramics, and photography. Between 1999 and today, these are the three media for which we have seen the largest proportional growth in the collection. In addition, Faulkner Gallery has expanded upon the educational purpose of the collection, for example, by having students and faculty participate in the curation of exhibitions. Now, we have been approached by a student who's, uh, he's a, I think he's a sophomore, in, or a second year now, and he's interested in actually participating with us in an exhibition of queer art which we have not done as a theme. We have a few things in the collection that would relate, but he's interested in a contemporary exhibition of queer art, not only just queer uh, visual art, but also performance art. So, um, 
and we've actually encouraged him to come up with you know a preliminary checklist who might he be interested in um, what might be be interested to, um, what what things might we want to include um, and we've encouraged him to 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 bring a bunch of interested faculty members together so that it's not just his idea of queer art or my idea of queer art it would be a collaborative thing with faculty member and other students on campus. So it, that is something that may happen in the next two years. We, we suggested we do it before he graduates, and I think he graduates in spring of 2021. So we'll see where that goes, and we'll see how, how um, provocative it, it becomes. Um, it's certainly not something we've done before. So. This type of participation in the Faulkner Gallery's programming reflects a larger idea inherent to a liberal arts education that, quote, students should be active in the construction of knowledge. This view is put forward by Jacoba Urris in the Atlantic article, Why Do Colleges Have So Much Art? Urris then concludes that, quote, the mission of college art may have evolved from strictly a teaching tool to something much more exploratory. But when students perceive their world differently, they become more imaginative and inventive thinkers. The participation of the campus community in the gallery also makes the gallery a more valuable resource, creating a positive feedback loop in which the educational purpose of the gallery continues to grow and develop. We can so enrich what we do when we partner with the campus. And that's something that a lot of museums don't have the resources. They don't have the faculty with amazing knowledge and experience that they can bring into the gallery to enliven an exhibition. We don't have the students who are studying incredible things and can bring a perspective that nobody else really has. Uh, and we can't, I mean, we're in the enviable position of being able to bring amazing visitors here as well, uh, both to serve as um, ways to enhance what we're doing in the gallery, but also to meet with students and work with classes and develop projects. So I think that's what's really different is we have a set of resources that most museums don't have readily at their disposal. From the time we opened Faulkner, we've kept that idea that social commentary is really sort of at the heart of everything that we do. Uh, it's certainly at the heart of what we think of as our collecting philosophy for the gallery. Not everything we collect has to be social commentary. There's lots of wonderful art that you could make it into social commentary, but you don't need to do that. Um, but a lot of our exhibitions have fallen directly in line with that as well. Uh, whether it is Diane Victor, who I know you've heard about from Kay, or Edward Bertinsky, who is an unbelievable Canadian photographer who's looking at ways that you can use photography to awaken people's emotional response to environmental degradation. Um, John Scott, another Canadian who has fought for years to get people to sort of understand the inhumanity of human beings towards one another. Um, all of these artists are, have at some level social commentary as part of their DNA as artists. And I think it's one of the reasons we were really excited early on to do a lot of international shows because we could bring in voices that had a different take on social commentary. And I'm thinking there of the show we did a year ago fall of indigenous artists from India, which we at first took because it just sounded like something cool and different and um, some of our faculty would teach from it. And then we discovered that these um, essentially tribal groups in India that are still making art today are using their traditional ways of making art to tackle HIV and human trafficking and tsunami effects and um, environmental degradation in very traditional languages, but trying to get the message out to people that otherwise wouldn't get the message and they can use art to do it. So that was really stunning to see that. Since its opening in 1999, Faulkner Gallery has continued the original purposes of Grinnell's art collection, to be a teaching tool and a way to display works of art with a social and political mission. With Faulkner Gallery's presence on campus, students, faculty, and members of the wider Grinnell community have more opportunities to view art. More than that, 
Faulkner allows them to engage in the always evolving dialogue of how art is produced, collected, exhibited, interpreted, and felt. Sometimes an artist's work can make you feel wonderful and happy. Sometimes it disturbs you and makes everything that you think or thought or believe before you saw the art disturbed. The purpose of an art gallery is to put those things, make the object that conveys the culture and the art and the beliefs of people available for study by other people who, are, who may think differently, believe differently, or never experience that. I think that's one of the purposes of, an, of any art gallery on a campus, and I think that's the purpose of 